Hello everybody, this is Shane Armin Rowe with NVIDIA Shield Zone. We're going to be looking at setting up the Arc Browser. This is an emulator front end. As you can see, we've got tons of emulators installed right here. A bunch of ROM files copied over to our internal memory here on the NVIDIA Shield Android TV. And uh, we're ready to set this guy up fresh. All right, so you go in here and you really have absolutely nothing. First thing you need to do is go in and set up a system. First system we're going to set up is the Atari 2600. We'll also be setting up the Commodore 64, the Coleco emulator, except for I didn't want that one, but that's okay. Can I delete that guy? Well, all right, I want the deluxe version. We're also going to be adding the Nintendo DS, FPSC PlayStation, GBAMU, GBCMU, and what else will we be adding? MD, the Mega Drive, and of course TurboGrafx 16, the PCEMU, and we'll be adding PSP Gold, which I have not installed yet. All right, let's do that real quick. So I've added systems, but I have no games. Now I need to go into each one and point it to my ROMs folder for each one. So let's start with the Game Boy Color, ROM directory, browse, down to ROMs, GBX, select this folder, okay, and what are the ROM extensions? I believe they are GB, comma, GBC, comma, and zips. So we're going to do all three of those. All right, everything else is kind of set up for us. All right, so we've added our first system. Let's go ahead and do a scan. We're going to go ahead and scan without scraping, so none of the metadata is going to come back for these games, but it should add them to the system. All right. There's not a whole lot in there. Let's take a look. All right, so I've got uh, three games in there. Again, none of them have metadata yet. Since there's only three, let's go ahead and scan and scrape. Oops. All right. We're going to rescan and scrape. So it's going to walk those three files. As you can see, it's a lot longer process. And it's going to try to get the metadata for those. And when I go back up there, you'll notice that I've suddenly started to get categories. And inside here, I have box art for each one. Sweet. All right, so let's repeat that process. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead and add Sega Mega Drive, also known as Genesis. Let's see if I've got some. Do I have any for that guy? I don't think I put any in for that one. I will set that one up later. Nintendo DS. ROMs directory, doo, doo, doo. DS folder, select this folder, okay, and the ROM extension is NDS, I'm going to go ahead and add zips too, because I know my emulator supports it, done, and done, ColecoVision, oops, except for I want the deluxe ColecoVision, ROM directory, browse, ROMs, ColecoVision, select this directory, okay, and I need COL and probably zip. All right, so now I've got ColecoVision set up. This is really just how easy it is. ROM directory for TurboGrafx-16, also known as PC Engine. Uh, I think I passed it. There we go. Use this directory. 
okay and um, hmm I do not remember what those file extensions are so let's go to a file explorer let's go take a look in our TurboGrafx 16 and let's see let's view it looks like mostly zips fine we'll add zips we can add other ones later no big deal all right TurboGrafx 16 we got our folder let's add zip extensions all right good and 2600 add ROM directory ROMs 2600 select this directory okay a2600 is or a26 is fine but I also need bin and that should do it for that one all right Game Boy Advance ROM directory browse ROMs GBA select this directory okay ROM extension GBA and zip all right PlayStation ROM directory ROMs PSX select this folder okay um, ISO uh, bin I think that should do it for now all right Commodore 64 ROM directory browse ROM C64 select this directory now here will be the interesting uh, if it'll see if it will do recursive directories extensions D64 PRG zips we'll find out soon enough all right so that gives us most of our emulators let's go in and do a scan without scraping and as you can see it's tearing through the emulators it's a lot of files now scanning without scraping gives you immediate access to the titles which is perfect um, then you can scrape overnight or while you're at work or whatever so if I can go into Game Boy Advance I have no categories but they're all here all the stuff in my personal collection anyway right if I go to 2600 the games are all there just no artwork yet all right so here's what we're gonna do we're gonna go ahead and stop the recording uh, I'm gonna start this um, scraping so while this thing sits and scrapes we're gonna take a little break and uh, we'll speed this thing up we'll let you know how long it actually took to do everything and then we will um, get back to the business of actually trying these guys out we'll be back and we are back well that took quite a while but let's see what the fruits of our labor look like hmm well that's too bad it looks like the rest of them all came in except for maybe ColecoVision okay Mega Drive of course we didn't set up PSP all right so let's go take a look and see what it was that we did incorrectly we learn by doing all right well PSP we have to install the emulator PPSSPP all right, let's do this the easier way 
PPSSPP. -P. Mm, we're going to have to sideload that guy, huh? It's okay, we can do that. All right, what other problems did we have? ColecoVision, right? PSP. All right, ColecoVision. Oops, too many backs. All right. Hmm. I have a feeling it doesn't like the fact that we have two of them. So let's go back here and delete this other one. All right. Quick rescan without scraping. Uh -huh. There we go. Now we have the ColecoVision. We're missing some artwork, but hey, not too bad. All right, everything else looked pretty good except for our Commodore 64. What did we do wrong there? Hmm. Let's go take a look at our... C64 folder. Oops. ROMs. C64. Ah. So, unfortunately, these are all in lettered lettered subfolders. So, we're going to have to go and take them all out of there. We'll do that in a little bit. In the meantime, on my other screen, I'm going to... Um, you don't have to sideload everything. Let me go ahead, and I'm going to bring up on my other screen, which you won't be able to see, of course, but um, I'm going to go ahead and bring Google Play up. And I'm going to search for PPSSPP. This is in a web browser on my computer. PSP Gold, install on NVIDIA Shield Android TV. And what do we got? Oh, hey, there she blows. And there's the gold. All right, so we have a working emulator. Now we go back to Arc Browser. PSP Gold. ROM Directory. Browse. Oops. Browse. ROMs. PSP, select this folder, OK. ROM extension ISO and CSO. Oops. CSO. All right. That should be enough. All right, quick scan without scraping. How do we do? PSP all games. And I've only got one, God of War, Ghost of Sparta. So that should not take very long for us to scrape. So let's go ahead and rescan and scrape. Should pick up a couple of uh, missing files. And of course, the uh, handful that we added. It'll search the other ones, but it's already got stuff for those. So it'll swing on by. So again, um, there's a lot of things that are not available on the Google Play Store on the Android TV. But if you go to a web browser, they are compatible with the Shield Android TV, and you can simply install them from the web. Now we can probably just go ahead and abort that. Let's see if we got what we needed out of the uh, PSP. So Action Adventure, which God of War is both. See, isn't that nice? It looks great, right? All right, so I still have to fix... Uh, I have to put some games on for Mega Drive, and I have to fix my Commodore 64 game problem, which I will do in the background here on my computer. I have a, an FTP link over to... Um, this device, and one of my other... Um, one of my other tutorials, I'm going to teach you guys how to do this too. All right. 
So we are going to grab all of these files and we're going to move them to the root. Same folder. I'm going to destroy the directory structure so that all of the C64 games are in one big folder. We'll do a rescan and I bet they all show up nicely. All right. There we go. Rescan without scraping. Yeah, a lot more in there, right? Mm hmm. Now, Commodore 64 should have lots of games. Unfortunately, we have to scrape all of these too. Now, you can scrape them one at a time, by the way. So let's go into, say, um, something I know for a fact will scrape, which is Archon. Go to Tools. Uh, fix with a different name, which we don't have to do. We just can fix it with the actual name. And you can choose. I like Archon the Light and Dark. Perfect. Excellent. Now, it doesn't update there, but if you go back and go back in, Archon, trust me, will be updated. So we can do a couple different ones here. We can do Aztec Challenge. Um, 1983. I hate that box. I'm going to change it, which you can do um, by copying inline graphics. I'm going to show you how that works in just a minute. All right, just to verify that that worked. All right, so we have Aztec Challenge. Um, we have a box that I really don't like. So what we're going to do is I'm going to bring up... Um, Oops, not the store. I'm going to bring up the file manager. I'm going to go into the C64 folder again. And as you can see, all of the uh, files are outside of their directory structure. Okay, so what were we doing? Aztec Challenge. Okay, so as you can see right here, there's only an Aztec Challenge D64. That's the ROM file. What I'm going to do is I've got some prepared artwork here. Now, you can override the scrapers files by putting in your own artwork, which I, like I said, I just happen to have ready. Now, I'm doing this on the back side where you can't really see, so that's not really fair. But I'm going to copy over a file. You'll see it appear here in just a second. If this thing refreshes, let's go down here and hit refresh. How do I refresh without using a mouse? Uh, we'll just go in and go back in. Okay, so that didn't work out, so we actually do have to refresh. All right, let's go back in. Commodore 64, back out. Better to use a mouse for this sort of thing. Refresh. And let's see if our Aztec Challenge got... There we go. So now we have the Aztec Challenge, and we have Aztec Challenge underscore box. So now you notice what this box looks like. Now we're going to jump back out of here. Go back into Arc Browser, go back to Commodore 64, look at all games, and then look at that. We actually have the proper box for Aztec Challenge now. I don't necessarily like that background. I like the swimming one better. So we're going to do the same sort of scenario, only this time we're going to replace the box art. So again, we're going to go to our ROMs folder. I'm going to copy over another file, Aztec Challenge underscore background.png. It has to be named exactly the same as the ROM file, but underscore background. Let's go in here. I'm assuming, oh, there's my background. It got copied over. Now it's the swimming event there in Aztec Challenge. So we go back into Arc Browser. Lo and behold, we have the new background. So if you can't find, if you can't scrape what you want, make your own, right? So uh, just for fun, I'm curious if Bagot Man will show up. Nah. All right, so let's say Bagot Man doesn't show up as it is. We can search with using a different name. Let's try Bag uh, Dash It Dash man search all right let's try this 
bag. Man. Well, all right, so uh, we'll probably have to either uh, make our own custom artwork for that or we'll have to go up and add it to the game database, which is where the scraping gets all of its information from. One of the things you'll see are things like Beachhead 2 or Ghostbusters 2, etc., etc. They will not find the game unless you use the Roman numerals. So let's try this. Beach... Head. I, 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 I. Well, lo and behold, there it is. Yeah, that looks better. Well, it will when I go back in and go back out. So, there you have it. That's pretty much everything you really need to know to do this. Oh, shall we launch some stuff? Take a look and see how it works? Sure, that would be great. So let's go into Game Boy Color. I've only got a couple of titles in here. Actually, this is regular Tetris, not Tetris DX. So let's fix the match using a different name. This does happen from time to time, so it's good that we saw this. Search. And that's interesting. Hmm. Ah. All right. So let's take a look at this. So this definitely is the original Tetris. And I seem to be in another language here. Somehow I think I'll be able to figure it out. It is Tetris after all. The game that enslaved a generation. Dirty birds, man. Dirty, dirty, dirty birds. All right, yes, we want to exit. We go right back into our area. Let's see what else we got going on here. How about some Coleco action? I've had trouble with ColecoVision recently, so let's see if we can um, get that going. Where's my bump and jump? Yeah. All right, well, it works if they're not zipped. I think that's sort of the secret. Have to use overlays because the ColecoVision had a keypad. All right, so let's see. What do we have here? Standard controller, skill one. Here we go. I always liked bump and jump. Commodore 64 version is definitely better, but, you know, what do you want? Good old bump and jump. Bonk. Smack him down. All right, so bump and jump is great. Back once more to exit. All right, and we're back again to our situation here. Turbo Graphics 16. How about we take a look at one of these guys? Uh, let's see. How about good old Galaga 1988? Or it's Galaga 90, I think, in here. Lose track. Oh, Galaga 80 and Galaga 90. Hmm. We'll have to go in and check that out. Ah, yes. Oops. I don't think I have the button set up right for this. There we go. All right. So as you can see, these things run great. Now you can go into each individual emulator. Um, like for example, if you don't like um, if you don't like the the interlacing type look or the the linear um, filtering, right? We can actually go in here, um, go into uh, let's see, options, video, turn off the interpolation so it's got that nice clean pixelated look. All right, um, that looks pretty good. So now it's got that much more solid pixel look. Purists tend to like that. All right. So uh, as you can see, this is all pretty straightforward. I mean, once you set everything up and you do your big long uh, uh, session of scraping, you end up with some pretty nice looking interfaces. All right, well, I hope you've enjoyed this look at Arc Browser and getting it all set up and working with emulators here on the Shield Android TV. This is Shane Armin Rowe with NVIDIA Shield Zone. We'll see you next time.